that. Joel Sherman rejoining us with news. Uh, kind of a pitching segment here, Joel. A couple of veteran arms that have deals and a bunch that don't. Let's start with the guys that signed yesterday. Yeah, Jeffrey Spring, Springs is kind of the perfect example of the Tampa Bay Rays, isn't he? He came on a not noteworthy trade from uh, the Boston Red Sox. Under their tutelage, he became a uh, graduated to become a starting pitcher. Had a terrific year last year as a starting pitcher. 246 ERA, 135 in the third innings. And then, like the Tampa Bay Rays, they signed him to what could turn into a very team-friendly contract. Four years at $31 million that buys out a couple of years of arbitration. Four Springs, kind of a classic Tampa Bay story. By the way, the Rays had the most arbitration eligible players who exchanged contract figures at seven. If I do my math right, minus one, they're down to six. The other veteran who uh, reached an agreement yesterday, it was a minor league deal, was uh, Juris Familia, a uh, long time met. Last year played with both Boston and Philadelphia and not very well. He had a 6.09 ERA last year for the two teams. For those guys with at least 40 innings last year, his batting average against 302, second worst in the majors, 402 on base percentage, third worst in the majors. He's a guy who went to drive line in the offseason. He played winter ball in, the, in his uh, native Dominican. He's trying to revive himself, sign the contract that if he plays in the major leagues will guarantee him $1.5 million. Very good. Two guys that have signed deals. However, the other shoe is this, uh, as you're going to point out to us, there are a lot of relievers, and they all have something in common here. They all seem to be left-handed, as, as I'm looking at your list. How come these guys are still out there? Yeah, so uh, Ken Rosenthal on The Athletic wrote about this earlier in the week. At the same time, I was thinking about it a lot because just to be parochial, uh, both New York teams, I think, could stand to add a second left-handed reliever. So I was looking at the free agent market, and it's loaded with left-handed relievers still of some pedigree, as you see from this list. And look, you can make individual reasons why they haven't signed. Will Smith, coming off a championship in 2021, didn't pitch very well last year. Zach Britton's only thrown 38 innings the last three years. Tommy John surgery. Matt Moore had a very good year, but was that an aberration? He'd never done it before, et cetera, et cetera. But I wanted to kind of like find out why is this group still in it, so I called the agency for three of these players two of them didn't you know they all talked to me two didn't want to uh, talk about uh be named for this of course the one who did was scott boris who represents zach Britton, and i asked him what's going on here and i just want to read his quote because i think it's interesting and is part of the answer here he said this is frosting time the cake is complete but doesn't have the required finish and so what does that mean this was an off season in which as opposed to the last few off seasons, teams went out and acted boldly and financially big on the big free agents. By the first of the year, all the main guys, except for Correa, which had obvious other reasons, were off the board. And teams had essentially spent their budget. Well, the, th the extras for a budget is usually fourth outfielders slash relief pitching, especially a lefty reliever. If you look at what's left in free agency, that's what's left in it as teams are looking around. You have to deal with modernity a little bit. Most teams now, especially if they're up against their budget, they think to themselves, hey, we signed a minor league guy uh, uh, you know, with an invite to spring training or we have our own minor leaguer. What's the difference between that and signing this kind of player to it? The agents all pointed out, all of these guys have probably been offered contracts of some sort already, but it isn't enough for them, and that deal isn't going to change between now and about February 13th when everybody shows up for spring training. So why not wait? They may even wait into spring training, some of these guys, to see does a team show up and say, man, we spent all this money. Where's our left-handed reliever we could trust? Maybe we need to bust the budget a little to do a little more or a guy gets hurt. And the last thing I would point out, only two left-handed free agents have signed multi-year contracts this offseason so far. That's Taylor Rogers, three at 33 million with the Giants, play with his brother, and Matt Strom, two years at $15 million with the Phillies. And I think a couple of these relievers, especially Chafin and Moore, would think that they had at least as good, if not better, a year than Strom, and maybe they deserve at least that, if not more, is that slowing it down? And don't forget, a lot of teams solve this problem with trades, right? We saw the other day the Royals got Josh Taylor for Alberto uh, Mondesi. 
And I would just point out, at the top of the NL East, where we have three very aggressive teams, the Phillies, besides adding Strom, they traded for Gregory Soto, the Mets traded for Brooks Raley, and the Braves traded for Lucas Litke. So some of these teams think they solved their problem without having to buy it, and they solved it through the trade market. Great information from Joel Sherman on this day on a uh, still-crowded left-handed relievers market. Joel, thank you.